CHV tutorials. This is Business Start 101 and this is the practical video for measures of dispersion, right? Measures of dispersion. So in the theory video, we discussed the measures of dispersion, right? How you measure dispersion or how spread out data is in a distribution. We talked about concepts like the range, the mean deviation, the variance, so you had the population variance and then the sample variance, right? And then you had the standard deviation being the square root of the variance. Right? So we have the range, right? The range is given the range is given by what? Highest x value and the lowest x value, right? So this is the lowest x value, this is the highest x value. Right? So we can go straight away and just kill the mean, right? Now this is this this uh, we can take care of the range straight away. It's always the easiest one to solve. This table is you know a question that is practical and we use it to test or practice our understanding of the concepts and how to go about them in an examination. So with this table that we've been given, we have to find for these things, right? range, mean deviation, population variance, the sample variance, the standard deviation, and the skewness of the distribution. That will do at the last part of this video. Because of the need here, right? It, it will take us, of course, a little. But no worries. Very, very good. So, measures of dispersion, right? This is for the simple frequency distribution, right? Simple frequency distribution. I'm sure you could already detect that, right? Simple frequency distribution, right? This data hasn't been grouped. That's why we call it the simple frequency distribution. So let's let's get down to business. Start with the range, as I said, the easiest one to solve. The highest x value minus the lowest x value. Highest means seven, lowest being one. Obviously, the range would be six, right? So the range of the, of the distribution is six. Now let's, the, let's get to the mean deviation, right? And the mean deviation formula is given us MD squared towards the summation of the frequency multiplied by the absolute difference between the x values and the mean. That's the x bar. All divided by sigma f. So if you are paying attention, you write that. If you are paying attention, you could tell we would be solving the mean deviation before the variance and then the standard deviation. If you look at the setup of this table, right? So I have everything prepared. Now, how did I arrive at this table? Let me break that down. Obviously, from the form of the mean deviation, you know that it is necessary for us to obtain our x bar, which is the mean, right? x bar is how we note the mean. So that we derive the x bar or the mean. The formula for the x bar, if you remember from the video on central tendency, is what? Sigma f, sigma f x divided by Sigma F, right? And that's why we but I have included this table here, right? Because this column would give us sigma F, which is the total frequency. Whereas this third column would give us sigma Fx, right? So we use these two columns to derive our mean. From there, where do we go? We have to find for the absolute difference between the mean. No, the mean, this value, and each of the x values. So, 1 minus the mean, 2 minus the mean. So, it's, remember, it says absolute value. So, we will not deal with negative or positive. If it's negative, so you just write 2. Right? So, you, you, to make it simple, when you see this bracket, it simply means that whatever answer you derive, 
Right like that. Don't include negative. If, if, if there's a negative, you don't bring the negative. Good. After we have derived these figures, we then multiply these figures by their corresponding frequency. So let's let's get down to the action, right? So first first step. So we can say that if you are solving the mean division in your examination, the first step is to calculate for your mean. Right? The first step would be to calculate for your mean. Because without getting the mean, you can't solve for this one, this column. And if you can't do this one, you definitely cannot do this one. Right? So it's steps. So you can derive you that when I'm solving for the mean division. So mean division, step one, find the mean. Step two will be what? Find the difference between the mean, the, the absolute difference between the mean and each of the x variables. And then the third one will be what? Multiply, we will say what? Multiply each frequency by what? Its corresponding difference. So these are the steps that you could write down, which I believe would help you get a better understanding of the course, you know, of this concept. You try to test that again. Before I do the summation, I will do this first. All right. The multiplication, Fx. 1 times 5, 5, 2 times 9 would be 18. 3 times 4 would be 12, 4 times 10 would be 40, 5 times 6 would be 30, 6 times 12 that would be 72, 7 times 3 would be 21. Good. So now we have to find the total, right? This gives us 49. Very good. So, I'll just put the figures in straight away. Let me thoroughly explain it, right? So, the first step we found a mean using these first two columns, right? That gave us the 4.04. Very good. From this point, we move on to the second step, which was to obtain the difference between the sales value, the x values, and the mean. Right? So this was what? 1 minus 4.04, 2 minus 4.04. These are the answers, right? Now that I said that we are taking the absolute value, that's what. So 1, 2, and 3 should have given us negative values. But since we are taking the absolute values, negative does not appear. You get these values. Then move on to the step three, which is what? Multiply your frequency, right? Your frequency. Pay attention. This can be very confusing. So, frequency, right? You multiply this. Or, multiply. So the frequency by difference, the absolute difference, will give you your F, right? This part is the formula. So when you do all of that, all of that it gives you 76.28. This is this 76.28 is a summation of this, right? So this whole top part, a sigma F to bracket, frequency multiplied by the diff absolute difference between the x and the x values and the mean. That is 36.8.28. So finally to obtain our mean deviation. Right? Our sigma. Sigma of what? This.
which gives us 26.8 all over um, 49. Once you point this in your calculator, I'll run my answer to one decimal place. So, you should get 1.6. 1.6 sales. That will be the main deviation. Alright, so that's how the main deviation works. So, good. Now, up next, we will talk about the population variance and then the sample variance. But, I want to mention, make mention of one thing. See, this is the simple frequency distribution. But in the, in the theoretical video, you would realize that in some of the instances, you had a question, but there was no table. They just gave you plain figures. So imagine you had figures like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Right? That's I'm displaying on the screen right now. So you see it's on the screen. You just take those values and you start like that. So you use those values as your sales. Right, as you can see in the picture. But there will be no frequency. So from that point, shit away, you come to this. So another formula that was given was what this. And uh, that mean deviation is equal to the right, so that's the number of values. So, what I'm drawing at Imagine we have our figures, right? Our figures There 1, 4, 5, 6, 1, no, 8, 7, 2 this is how we are going to work. Let me just show you how we do it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The next thing you do is what? You find the mean of this. So you make 1, 2, 3. You just have to get the mean first. This today, 6, 10, 15, 21, 27, minus 3, 30, 34. Right. So that will give you 34 all over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It's over 7. Now, when you start for this, the answer for this one is what you're going to use over here. So you have to answer, let's just assume, let's say 2, 1, 4, 1, 2, 1, 4, whatever that is. It, it, this doesn't usually come in examination, but you are having this question, but I, I want to explain it. See how, see how you go about it. Right. So we're going to get to this point, I will find a deviation. You just sum this. You get a total for this one. You get a total. And you can use that one over here. Over the end. Where end is the number of values? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Right. So I'm moving on to the variance. So to continue. We will now solve for the variance. We will start with the population variance, right? So this is the formula. So first step, always jot your formula down. Very good. What do you notice? So what is the difference between this first one and this one? In this first one, it's sigma f x squared, right? So this means that, you know, in algebra, right, 
these are two variables, <coughs> and these are two variables. So this is multiplying this. So for this one, it's f times h squared. So before you can get this, we have to find for you know the frequency has already, has already been given in the question. See, the frequency is already given. So to find for this one, we have to begin with the x squared. Find for x squared first. So we'll square all the x values in this column. When we are done with that, we will then multiply them. So it will be frequency times x squared. And we finish to sum all of them. So sigma f x squared. Right. But in this one, with this one, it's more than this. F times x all squared. So this one you multiply f to x first. And then you square them to get an answer. Good. So let's do that. That's what it is. Table is for. I hope you are getting it. We begin f x right so f by x let's do that as i mentioned we 198 all you know that we square the x values so 1 squared, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, 6, 36, and 7, 49. That gives a variance of 3.998 sales. Right? So our population variance becomes 3.998. Very good. Now, the advantage of In an examination, it's unlikely that you'll be asked to solve for both because it's basically the same thing. So when you're solving for the sample variance, it's the same process. The same elements is all you need. There's that when you're solving for sample variance, you have minus one over here. So it becomes So 
professor for the sound programs. It was simply the comment. Zima F X squared minus Zima F X all squared all over. Zima F right. All over. Zima F minus one. So if you were dealing with sample variance, when you got over here, we just bring minus one. So let me put it to that. Nine nine six minus one nine eight all over forty nine all over forty nine minus one. Right. And when that is done, the answer becomes four point zero eight two. See? So it's nothing there's nothing difficult about that. In an examination, you you you'll only be asked to find one. So it will just be variant in the formula we're given the back of the answer booklet. Right? So just I I just saw the difference. When you're dealing with the sample variance, it's basically the same formula, but we can't stick my f minus one, that's the denominator. Not over the minus one doesn't come over here, it's the denominator is sigma f minus one. Good. So standard deviation would be next, right? And so standard deviation is simply the square root of the variance. In this instance, I'm going to be using the, the population variance, right? So in an examination or a test, you'll be given a table like this. You'll be, you'll be asked to find for variance, standard deviation, mean deviation also. But you know, be asked to find for population variance and sample variance in the same question, right? To so happen like So the standard deviation. And you notice the same for standard deviation. It's the same as variance, but without the square, right? And in the square root of variance, so this becomes square root of three point nine nine eight. This becomes one point nine. Nine, nine, five. Right. So throughout, you can choose. Maybe you want to approximate your answer. You first approximate this answer to one decimal place. You will get four point zero. You get four. If you do the same for this one, you, your answer will then go at two. This is what one decimal place. So there you go. There you have it. That's the rent. Now, so for all of this, right? Now, what about if you are given the group data, right? How will you suffer the group data? I won't do another video on that because it's basically the same thing that we've done throughout this video. So, all I'll say is when you are solving for the group data, you need your x points, right? So you just have to find for the midpoint. Let me elaborate on that. Let me just put this down. Good. So let's assume that we are given has boundary side. Right? So let's say this was 0 to 3 and this was 4 to so 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, right? 
9, 10, 11. Thirteen fifteen. This is what I mean. Notice how I'm doing it. Right. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. What is it? Twenty. That's four. Twenty three. Right. Twenty four. Twenty seven. Let's show you that this as our X node. We're giving these classes. So, all you have to do before you can come and do all these things is to arrive at our midpoint. And the midpoint is given by what? The upper class bungee plus the lower class bungee divided by 2. You do that and get our midpoints. Which you would then use as your x values. So when you get the x values, that's why you used to do the work. Right. I don't do another video on it, but if you would like me to do it, if you would like me to do another video, you know, covering the group data and all that, we then not see. Just let me know in the comment section and we'll do that for you. But that's basically it. There's no difference between the group data and then the um, simple frequency distribution. Because it's the same procedure, either with the group data, you have to derive your class midpoint before you could begin the work. Good. So let's see how we go about the skewness now. Or a distribution. This is the formula for skewness, right? 3 to bracket mean minus median all over the standard deviation. The median I've already calculated it is 4. If you don't understand how I arrived at the 4, then you just need to check out the video on measures of central tendency. You know, this is simple frequency. So that would just be there. I'll put a link in the comment section and probably at the end of this video. So you can check that out to know how to solve for the median. Anyway, standard deviation, we gotta ask to right? So, see, I've arrived at a positive answer. Right? And now you said, yeah. Right. This so when you get a positive answer, I said that the distribution is skewed to the right. Or you can say it's, it's positively skewed. If you get a negative figure, it's negatively skewed. If you get the answer as zero, you say the distribution has a symmetrical skewness. Good. So that's it for measures of dispersion. I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.